Hi guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk of a very interesting tool or a very useful tool that you can definitely utilize in your daily CPU journey. Now this happens to be really useful, but a disclaimer over here that please don't use it on regular basis because what would happen is that if you're using it regularly, then at some point in time, you'll uh, literally forget that how to generate your own test cases or how to detect what the problem in your code is. You'll start relying on this a lot. The only reason I actually used it myself is because I tried a lot of time dry running the code and trying it on different test cases, generating a, a, different, uh, a lot of different test cases on my own. And uh, over here, you can see that I already had around 30 wrong submissions. And I was totally frustrated. I really wanted to uh, get what uh, at what test case my uh, code was actually failing and I was not able to predict it. That's the only reason for using it. So yeah, that was a quick disclaimer. Cool. So with that, let's get started and let's understand what this code does. Now, the first thing you need to do is that firstly, you need to, uh, without understanding what the code is actually doing, first thing you have to do is to download the zip file itself. So do that, right? I'll, I already have that code. So I'll not be, uh, I already have the zip file on my computer. So I'll not be doing that. Then open this up in any PowerShell or command line tool as you require. So I'll just open that. Give me a second. Uh, once inside it, you need to go to the sample page, right? So this has uh, inside it, there's a sample folder, a folder that you need to open and let's check the content that are inside of it. So you will be having something like a generator.cpp. Other than that, you need to put two codes over here. So now why two codes? You only are having one code, right? So what you need to do is that, let's say this was the particular problem I was facing difficulties at, right? So in this problem, I was not able to understand that what test cases are there that at which my test, uh, at which my algo is failing. So just go to the submission, uh, go to all submissions and pick any submission of any person that is actually correct. So let's say I just pick this particular submission, but yeah, it's better if you pick the C++ submission. Okay. So language can be selected over here. Just select the word as correct and select any submission. So if I select the submission, I can co copy this code from here. I'll just have to paste it. Now, where should I paste it? There's a, a file called correct.cpp over here that you can see, right? Yep. Over here, this is, uh, there's this correct.cpp. So open this file up. You can open this in Vim or Sublime or wherever you want and just paste the correct code inside of it. In the other file, that's uh, the wrong.cpp. You have to paste your code, which actually is failing, but you don't know where it's failing, right? After that, just open this file that's called, uh, okay. so generator.cpp so once you open it up this file should actually contain the type of test cases you want so for this particular example i i was just testing it for a single test case right i'll advise you to do, uh, do the same like whenever you are test uh, whenever you want to know that where your code is failing it's always better to have a single test case uh, because the reason if is if you're having multiple test cases and it's failing in one of the test case then you'll again have to debug that, okay, there were 100 test cases, uh, which I already provided. Now it's failing at one test case, now which that one is, right? So in order to get rid of that manual effort, what I'll say is that always try with, with just one test case. After that, it was expect, ex, uh, accepting two in, uh, inputs. So over here, okay, let's go to the statement. Yeah. So over here for each of the test cases, it it, uh, it is expecting two inputs. The range of uh, the first input is n and the other input is k, I guess. Yeah. So n can go up to 10 to power 9 and k can go up to, uh, up to 10, right? So uh, that's why I set a max as 10 to power 9, right? And the uh, value for r was set up to 10. So that's how I'm taking my l and r, right? Now I'm printing out the l and r. So that's what my generator is doing. That's it. So I'll quit this particular file. Now I'll say that I want to generate or I want to check if my code is working correct or at which particular location my code is breaking. So for that, there's a simple script. Okay. So this is the script they had provided. So we have to write Python 2 or Python 3. In my case, I'm working with a system uh, on which Python 3 is installed. You make sure that whatever Python variant is installed on your computer, this command needs to be uh, like suitable for that. After that, you'll provide the test.py, right? And then you have to provide it. So this uh, C flag over here is corresponding to the correct solution. So you have to uh, write minus C followed by the correct solution. 
माइनस डब्ल्यू फॉलोड बाय द रॉन्ग सोल्यूशन एंड माइनस जी फॉलोड बाय द जनरेटर सो जनरेटर ओवर हेयर इज द फाइल दैट इज एक्चुअली जनरेटिंग योर टेस्ट केसेज फॉलोड बाय माइनस टी एंड वन ना वट वट्स दिस माइनस टी एंड वन सो लेट्स से यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट एटलीस्ट टू टेस्ट केसेज वेर योर कोड इज फेलिंग सो यू यूल से दैट माइनस टी एंड टू सो आई नीड एटलीस्ट टू टेस्ट केसेज वेर माई कोड इज फेलिंग सिंस आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड वन टेस्ट केस वेर माई कोड वॉज फेलिंग सो आई जस्ट रोट माइनस टी एंड वन नाउ ओवर हेयर आई एक्चुअली ऑलरेडी मेड अ फाइल दैट हैज दिस डेटा सो आई हैव अ फाइल कॉल्ड रन मी सो दिस रन मी ऑलरेडी हैज दिस पर्टिकुलर डेटा राइट सो आई कैन कॉपी इट अप इफ यू वॉन्ट एंड देन आई कैन रन इट ओवर हेयर Let's see what happens. So you have to wait for a while because it's testing for different test cases, right? And then it will uh, check that at what uh, which test case your code was uh, giving a different answer and the valid code which you entered. By that I mean then the uh, that the code you entered in the wrong dot cpp and the code you entered in the correct dot cpp, they were giving different values, right? So it has to do, uh, do all that checking and hence it it takes some time. it might take a second or it might even take a minute because it's generating random values so there's no like a definite kind of a time that it would take but it definitely is taking longer than usual i checked it earlier mm, i guess over here okay it broke that but I'm sure I checked it. Yeah, I checked it over here. It took me maybe like fifteen seconds or something, right? Oh, oh, rather four seconds is what it took me. Now it's taking a pretty long time. Okay, cool. It found a test case. So yeah, it found a test case. Now how do I get the test case? So just print the content of this folder over here. Now I have something that is correct zero, right? Input zero and wrong zero. So let's check for uh, the input not. so it's giving me one of the test cases that is one followed by this right so let's check for correct not okay let's scale up okay okay so this had to be the answer but the answer i was getting was wrong not cool. so this needs uh, this was the number that should have been the answer and this was the answer that my algo was returning on this particular input so that's that's how it works the only reason i actually have a file named runme.txt is because i don't want to remember what uh, what uh, command needs to be entered over here or i don't want to waste my time with that so i can simply do a dot slash followed by runme right so it would do the same stuff for me so whatever uh, content would be there in the file that is exactly the statement or exactly the command that needs to be uh, run so it will uh, like run the command automatically for me so okay so yeah over here you can see it just took 12 seconds to produce the answer i don't know why it took a long time in this particular scenario it took 1 minute 9 seconds you can say it generally takes a few seconds to produce the answer Yeah, cool. So that's it for the video. One more thing is that yeah, when you're working for graphs or trees, then generating the test case would be a bit tricky. Not a lot tricky, but definitely a bit tricky. But this definitely would come a lot in handy uh, when you're actually frustrated on your code that why your code isn't working. So let me know if you still have any doubts on this particular topic or on how to use it. More than happy to help you uh, help you guys out. Bye bye.